2020's favorite life science story. Okay, so at the beginning of the year, I was pretty impressed to learn that solar storms could be causing gray whales to strand. Researchers reported that healthy gray whales were nearly four and a half times more likely to strand when there were more sunspots on the sun. And sunspots are indicative of solar storms and increased radiation. Now, gray whales migrate across the oceans twice a year, and there's a good chance they use Earth's magnetic field to navigate. So when something disrupts the magnetic field, like a radio wave radiation from a solar storm, it could be messing with the whale's ability to navigate and might cause them to run into a beach. My favorite story of 2020 was the double boomerang galaxy. And when you see it with a radio telescope, it looks like this giant X in the sky with each arm stretching on for tens of millions of light years in either direction. It's my favorite astronomy image of the year and one of the coolest things I've ever seen. My favorite article to write this year was a feature on mRNA vaccines. I not only learned a lot about them, but they, you know, they're the technology behind two of the leading candidate COVID-19 vaccines currently. It was really fun to write about how they could potentially be a game changer in the future of vaccine development. And since I've been following vaccines since the very start of the pandemic, it was nice to be able to write a hopeful piece for the future. I think the most intriguing question about the virus um, is, is how and where the virus originated. Um, I wrote a couple of articles on this and spoke with several experts about it, many of them saying that we might never know. We need a lot more research. We need people over there looking. We need um, a lot more communication before we're going to figure out how it originated and where it originated from. I think that's one of the most intriguing questions. My favorite science story from 2020 wasn't true at all. A group of tabloids initially reported that there's another mirror universe somehow next to our universe, and this isn't true, that that was a misunderstanding of the paper. But I was really grateful that that misunderstanding happened because it gave an opportunity to kind of dive into the weeds of this very strange story. One of my favorite stories of 2020 is the discovery that the ancient Ice Age people of Mexico actually went into caves and mined for a mineral known as ochre, which they use for ritual purposes, but also everyday activities like bug spray and sunscreen, which I really relate to as a redhead. I'm always putting on sunscreen. So my favorite story of the year was about the longest exposure photo ever taken. And I think what I love about this story is just how much the element of luck was involved. Um, a graduate student named Regina Valkenborg put a beer can on top of a telescope and she poked a hole in it to create a pinhole camera and then she left it up and forgot about it for eight years. What was really cool is that it captured thousands of arcs of the sun rising and setting over that time and created this really gorgeous eerie blue picture of the passage of time. My favorite story of 2020 was on the unusual case of a teenager who unknowingly swallowed a sewing pin that pierced his heart. The case stood out to me because I had never heard of a sewing pin or other ingested foreign object for that matter, traveling through the stomach and into the heart. So as a health reporter covering a pandemic, I tried to seek out tidbits of hope in the stories I was writing. And I found one of those in a story I wrote about COVID long haulers, who are people who contracted the virus but continue to experience symptoms long after their initial infection has cleared. COVID long haulers have banded together throughout the pandemic to jumpstart research projects. And thanks to those efforts on their part, now the wider medical community has also jumpstarted their own research so that in the future we might better understand the range of symptoms that stem from this disease in the long term, and we'll be able to help people more effectively because of that. One story that really stood out to me this year was about a type of aquatic beetle that stages kind of an unusual escape from the frog that preys on it. The beetles emerged from the back door exit uh, of the frog, which is called a vent, and the researcher said he was very surprised to see that. Yeah, I'll bet the frogs were very surprised too. Honestly, um, <laughs> passing alive through the colon of your predator and emerging out the other end, if that's not a metaphor for 2020, I don't know what is. 